It has been such a pleasure meeting all of the Zionists in the spotlight from around the country. I take great pride in knowing that the ZOA and the Jewish people as a whole have such brave and supportive advocates fighting for what's right. Also deserving of the spotlight is Dr. Bruno Wu, who generously endowed the Wu Kai Sheng Award, named after his wonderful grandfather, an extraordinary humanitarian giant and friend of the Jewish people, who before and during World War II worked overtime to rescue Jews fleeing Europe, helping them to reach safe haven in Shanghai. Angered by the monstrous Nazi persecutions, Mr. Wu helped Jews obtain asylum, procure residence permits and papers of all kinds, and provided Jewish refugees free legal advice, and even used his own money to help these downtrodden Jews. When the Japanese occupied Shanghai during the 1937 invasion of China, Mr. Wu helped Jews obtain visas to come to the United States. Unfortunately, his grandson, Dr. Bruno Wu, could not be here tonight, but it is my honor and privilege to present the Wu Kai Sheng Award for Outstanding Diplomacy to Gilad Erdan, Israel's new ambassador to the United Nations and soon to also be Israel's ambassador to the United States, the first such person to hold both positions since Abba Ibn in the 1950s. I am privileged to have known Javier Knesset Erdan, Minister Erdan, and Ambassador Erdan for almost 20 years, back to when he was a very young rising star in the Likud party. He is still young, young but extremely accomplished. To date, Ambassador Erdan has served in eight Knessets, the 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Prior to his new role, in addition to serving in the Knesset, Ambassador Erdan held numerous ministerial positions, including Minister of Environmental Protection, Minister of Communications, Minister of Home Front Defense, Minister of Interior, Minister of Public Security, Minister of Strategic Affairs and Public Diplomacy, and Minister of Regional Cooperation. Ambassador Erdan also has served as a member of the prestigious and critically important Prime Minister's Security Cabinet. While he is new to the United States, Ambassador Erdan's strong record when it comes to Israel's security and fighting anti-Semitism is not. There is so much to celebrate from his past and even more to look forward to. Ambassador, welcome to the neighborhood. It's my honor to present you with the Wu Kai Sheng Award for Outstanding Diplomacy. Friends, I would like to start by sending a refua shlema and extend our thoughts and prayers to all those who have been affected by COVID-19. It is true that the pandemic has changed our world beyond all recognition, but there is one disease that reaches much further and in many ways is much more sinister than coronavirus, and that is the virus of anti-Semitism. It has existed for as long as the Jewish people have existed, and unless we do more to fight against it, it will stay with us for generations to come. Growing up, I was very close to my grandparents, all four of them Holocaust survivors who, who rebuilt their lives in Israel. It was they who taught me the importance of fighting anti-Semitism in all its forms. Today, anti-Semitism has taken on a new guise, attacking and delegitimizing Israel, the world's only Jewish state. BDS activists try to mask their anti-Semitism behind the facade of human rights. They pretended their actions have nothing to do with Israel being a Jewish state, but we aren't fooled by them. During my term as Minister of Strategic Affairs, we exposed their anti-Semitic motifs in our Behind the Mask report. By going on the offensive, 
we were able to effectively fight against their anti-Semitism. As I take on my dual role here at the UN and come January in Washington, fighting anti-Semitism will be among my top priorities. And I know that the ZOA is by my side in this important fight. Friends, while this year supplied a fair amount of hate, it also delivered a fair amount of peace. I had the privilege of attending the signing of the historic Abram Accords at the White House in September. In only a short time, these agreements have transformed the region. There has been a flurry of cooperation on a myriad of levels, governmental, business, health, and more. But aside from the practical benefits, there has also been a shift in the way the sides view one another and their place in the region. The recognition of the Jewish people's right to self-determination in the Middle East has allowed the descendants of Abram to rekindle their connection. Together, we have started to build a brighter future. For years, the Palestinians held the interests of the Arab world hostage. Arab countries were forbidden from recognizing Israel's existence or having relations with us unless we surrendered to out outrageous Palestinian demands. The Abram Accords shattered that paradigm. Friends, the effects of these agreements can be felt here at the UN too. I have already met with the ambassadors of the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Sudan, and Morocco. We are promoting issues such as environmental protection, agriculture, fighting online radicalization, and many, many more for the mutual benefit of our countries. Perhaps we should thank Iran for this newfound bond. By continuing to spread its dangerous ideology, the Ayatollah regime has united the moderate forces in the Middle East. Today, we stand together in confronting the murderous intentions of the world's number one state sponsor of terrorism. When Israel and Arab countries unite on any issue, then the world should start listening. Friends, Despite the blow COVID-19 has delivered, Israel is thriving. We have a robust economy, resilient citizens with incredible ingenuity, new partners in the region, and of course, the friendship and support of our biggest ally, the United States. Israel's future looks brighter than ever. I want to thank you all for your unconditional and unwavering support of Israel and the Jewish people. You are a big part of what makes Israel such a wonder. Thank you from the bottom of my heart.